Hello foodies and welcome to episode four of Cooking with Vinci's. These episodes are brought to you by ECGC, WinFresh, Asbert News Network and Carez Distribution. So as per usual, I'm excited about tonight's episode. So let me set the scene for you. We're having a girls night. We decide that we're going to meet to laugh, to have fun, to have a good time. We have our wine from Carez Distribution Limited, and we decide we're going to call up our chef that's to come, Zoe, and say, what can you make for us tonight? What can pair well? What can we enjoy tonight? And she says she knows exactly what to make. So I'm going to invite her to come on in, tell us a little bit about herself and what she'll be making for us today. So welcome to Cooking with Vinci's, and can you introduce yourself for us? Good night, everyone, and I'm Zoe Millington of Cannon Cakes. So can you tell us, where did you get that name, Cannon Cakes? It's very interesting. I, from a young age, I love to mix flavors, play with flavors, see what mesh well. So I sat and I was like, you know what? How can I describe me? How can I describe my passion? It's not only baking, it's also seeing what I can make, what I can create. That's the little chemist side of me, right? So that's why I came up with the canon, with the explosion of flavors. All right, so you heard it here first. There is going to be an explosion of flavors. So I'm pretty sure that's something to come when our tasters come out here. Before we go a bit further, I always want to make sure that persons get the recognition. So can you tell us where can we find Canon Cakes? How can we get into contact with Canon Cakes? Sure. Right now, we, are not, we do not have a storefront to get to us. You can find us on Facebook or Instagram at Canon Cakes SVG, or you can give us a call or even WhatsApp at 455-1591. Okay, so the moment that everybody has been waiting for, what are we making tonight? Okay, I'm doing a twist, a play on the classic lemon meringue pie. I'm doing a sorrel meringue pie. I know everyone must have a little bag of sorrel left over, either dry sorrel, in the cupboard or frozen sorrel in the refrigerator. All right, so fresh out the season, we still have a little sorrel on the side. So we're going to go through the process of what you can do with your sorrel. So we're making a sorrel meringue. How did you learn how to make it? Like I said, I love playing with old recipes and seeing how I can make it my own. And I was sitting like, you know what? I went to my mom's kitchen and saw some sorrel. Like, you know, I can try this. Let's see how it goes. So what are the ingredients that you're going to be using here tonight? Sure. This recipe actually has three parts. First, gonna prepare the sorrel. Then we're preparing the pie crust. After that, we mix up our fillings and our final touch, my favorite part, is making the meringue. So can you share with us tonight, what are the ingredients that goes into making a sorrel meringue? Certainly. Aside from the little tricks and trade I will show you later on, we have first and foremost, the most important, our sorrel. As you can see here, we have our sorrel, which is our main ingredient in two different forms. First, most, and the most kitchens, homes have their sorrel already sun dried. Here, this is the process how it's gonna look after we boil it and put in a few, a bit more ingredients, and this is how it's gonna come. So, are there any secret ingredients in this that we should know about? Yes. <laughs> Cinnamon. I know everyone has their way of boiling their sorrel to make sorrel bare. However, I throw a little bit of cinnamon to bring out the flavor. Next, we have our pie crust, which is done with no other than our easy bake all-purpose flour. And our secret ingredient, apple cider vinegar. So for some of you who may not know, one of the many times I've heard about Zoe and Canon Cakes is that she would have won the ECGC baking competition. So I can tell you I am looking forward to what you're making tonight. Now we're preparing our sorrel. We take two cups of water, add it to our saucepan, along with our sorrel, which is two cups of dry sorrel. 
If it's a fresh sorrel, you will use three cups. Okay. Then we have ourselves some clove, a few pieces. And like I mentioned before, our secret ingredient, cinnamon. Now we take it to the stove on medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now what we'll do is try our best to submerge all of the sorrel leaves in the pot. Give it a quick stir. So they're nice and wet. And then you leave it to come to a boil for like. Now we're moving along to our pie crust. Here we have our flour, which is two and a half cups. We're gonna be using two teaspoons of white sugar, or you can use brown sugar as well. Two teaspoons of our velvet crisp shortening, or whichever shortening you prefer, and our secret ingredient, apple cider vinegar. Then our salt. And then we move into, we're gonna pulse it just 10, exactly 10 pulse. The problem with persons, sometimes they over mix their crust, which makes it more doughy and hard. So we're gonna do exactly 10 pulses and then drop some water, cold, cold water into the mixture. Like I said, exactly 10 pulses. So now your mixture should look like wet sand. Now we're gonna put in six tablespoons of our butter. So the good thing about this butter is it has the measurements on the labels. So you wouldn't have to worry so much on getting exact because it does the work for you. So the final butter goes in, and when it's finished, you should have small pea-like pebbles. Okay. So now we get our cold water, drop it in. We're gonna be using four to six spoonfuls. So I started with three. We're gonna mix it and see how that goes. As you can see, it's a bit dry. So I'm gonna add one more.
now our dough is completed, what we're going to do is take a sheet of cling wrap, fold it tightly and place it into the refrigerator. out yeah really So we turn it out on our cling wrap. Nice. As I said, you can see the nice little pebbles. Oops. Now you're gonna take oops, sorry. Take out that a bit. So you're gonna take each side and gently press it in as tight as possible. So, as you can see, our dough is forming. And the trick about this dough is, it's not too much of work. If you overmix it, it makes it harder to deal with. So there you go. You have your dough and place it in the refrigerator for about an hour. Or it can store in the freezer for over two months. Okay, so before we go to put any ingredients together, can you just give us a quick recap of what you would have done here? No problem. So we already put our soil to boil and cool. Then we made our dough and place it in the refrigerator and it's all chilly and ready for us to roll out. So I took note of a few things because after last episode, my mother said we have to try this. So just in case we have it for this episode as well, I just want to break down a couple of things. So you would have used a food processor. Is that something we should do? Can we need it by hand? Yes, most definitely. Simple tool, a bowl, and a fork. You cannot over-process your dough. When you do that, it gets rubbery and hard. It's a little finesse in it. So if you don't have a, a food processor at home, you get a simple bowl and a fork. And when you put in your butter, you take your time and knead it in with the fork. Okay, so we're not going to knead it like we're making dumpling. We have not to be all. very delicate. Yes. You used lard and butter? Yes. Okay, so what's the differentiation? That's a nice tip. The butter is smooth, but the lard gives it the crispy texture along with our apple cider vinegar. Don't forget that one. Okay, and one more thing. I noticed you use ice water. Yes. So why not water from the tap? Water from the tap will help the milk to melt. Although you may see, oh, it's room temperature, but it helps the butter to remain solid. So when it bakes and it melts, it gives it nice buttery, flaky texture and melts in your mouth. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start putting the ingredients together. So while you work on that, I'm still asking you a few questions like, First one, what's your favorite thing to bake? My favorite is the classic vanilla cake. You may think, well, she bakes all sorts of goodies. 
taste, it creates flavors. But I like the original cake. You know the cake your grandma make on Christmas time when everybody has one full cake and you don't like your food because you have to pick it out. And Granny makes that very delicious, warm vanilla cake. That's what I love. So you heard it here, classic vanilla cake is her favorite. All right, so let us put the ingredients together. Sure. So what we're going to do now is take our pan, set it aside, lightly, flour our countertop, This calls for a little muscle strength. So is there a specific, ooh. Yes. That is hard. So is there a specific technique that we're supposed to use when doing the crust or we just pound no, it out? No, we just pound it out, flatten it as much as possible. We could take it to like an inch or inch and a half. Mm -hmm. So we press it down first. Then, we're gonna take our rolling pin. As you can see, although you may think it looks like a rock, but as you work your way through, it's softened. So does the crust just go underneath or are we putting the crust on top as well? No, it just goes underneath. Underneath, to okay. the sides. Okay. Don't worry if you see it breaking like that, that's okay because we can mold it in the pan any way you feel like. So you might say, oh my gosh, it's breaking. I have to do it over. No, just take your time. Try to get it as even as possible. It won't be, you know, some person turn the door all the time, no. Simply leave it at that, take your time, roll it out. Okay, to check the size, what you can do, hold it over, you notice know, it goes right around, we'll take the extras and fill in the sides. Okay, so this is about ready. Okay, guess what? Forgot one small trick. My friend, cooking spray. I'm gonna coat. So we're not greasing it with the butter and the flour, we can just use a little cooking just spray. Just a little cooking spray. If you want to, you can melt the butter. Don't just take it out of the fridge, put it on a napkin and wipe. Melt the butter first and you can piece it on. Like I said, don't worry about the cracking, that's quite fine. Take our pan and use our fingers and guide it in. So is there a specific dish we can use or can we just put it in a smaller Pyrex dish? Yes, you can use any size you wish, but if it's a bigger, this normally fits a size 13 or 13 inch pan. You can use Pyrex dish, you can use a regular foil dish, but I, I prefer the Pyrex dish. Prevents the bottom from burning. Okay. So it's like a little artwork. So we're molding it like clay and just filling yes. in the edges.
So if you wish to have a little bit more stylish top, like you can follow the design that is on the pan, you give it a little pinch. You press, you pinch. pinch. Let's go here. The good thing about this recipe is you can do anything you wish. If you find another popular trick, you use your forks. You press it into the sides. It gives it a little bit of different design. Okay. So because our hands were a little bit warm, we're going to pop it back into the refrigerator for about five minutes. Okay, so now we move on to the sweet center. So guide us, where do we go from here? Okay, first, we're gonna place all of our dry ingredients. Our sugar, two cups, five tablespoons of cornstarch, and a bit of salt, a pinch of salt, to even things out. We're going to mix our dry ingredients, then add our sorrel. This is two cups of sorrel. Okay. Now we give it a little squish. Now we give it a little squish, squash as we call it. We're going to take it to the stove and bring it together and make it very thick. Is there a specific amount of time or we just look at it until it gets thick? We're gonna finesse it under medium high heat. So as we're mixing, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions. So you already told us what's your favorite thing to make. Can you tell mm -hmm. us what are some of the treats that we can get from Canon Cakes? Well, I would say absolutely anything your heart desires. What, you, what we normally do, we have our weekly specials where we feature different recipes such as cakes, cupcakes, we do our famous banana bread. Also, on Fridays, we have our cheesecake cups. Nice. And if we wanted to see what's available, we can mm -hmm. find you on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, you can just head on over to our Facebook or our Instagram page. It's Canon Cakes SVG. So as you can see here, a bit of bubbles, so that means we're cooking. The beautiful red color from our sorrel makes the pie very exciting to eat. All right, so I am assisting, and as we can see, it's a nice, thick texture. So where do we go from here? While you stir away, I'm going to separate my eggs. We're gonna separate four eggs, and we're only using the yolks in this part of the recipe. Okay. So we're not using the full eggs, we're just using the yolks. 
Bye. And there are different techniques. This is a professional. I tried to do it that way once and it busts. Yeah. So do what works for you. If you know you're not a professional, maybe That's get some assistance. Your hands, fork, something else. It's quite simple. Simple crack in the middle. Take your time, open it. Put the yolk in the half. Remember when you're going to need to go outside and cool your tea. Move from cup to cup. <laughs> yes, I love my grannies. I reference her all the time. Yes, I love my grandmother, so you will find me referencing her a lot. I grew up in my grandmother's kitchen. That's where I first found my love for cooking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then later on, my passion for the kitchen was molded by my uncle, my aunt's husband, mm -hmm. Mr. Ali Najed. He has a bakery in Musty. So you know my favorite times of going down to Musty, trying out recipes, having fun, burning pots. <laughs> so they okay. all, it's, it was a village. It was a village who helped me where I am today. So there we have it, another story of how cooking baking started in the kitchen with parents grandparents and now we're here and uncles as well so there's no shortage of family members that can teach us how to cook right. so back to our mixture i have elika head spinning away i think i might need to hire her she's doing a <laughs> very very good job i'm up for hire i'm up for hire okay so now we're putting in three tablespoons of butter you're ready Place two, final one. Okay, and the mixture okay. is hot, so this is melting yes. quite easily. All right, I can hand Thank back you. over to Professor. Thank you. Okay, as I said, she did a very good job. It is creamy, it is smooth no lumps whatsoever thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to move to another technique it's called tempering because our mixture is hot we don't want to just dump in our egg yolks because then we end up with egg Scrum in the eggs. meringue <laughs> correct so what we're going to do now is take a tablespoonful add it to our eggs that are lightly mixed and incorporate it Okay, now that we have tempered our eggs, we're going to take them and place it into our mixture. Okay, so we put a little of the mixture to incorporate it with the egg yolk and then we throw that filling back into the mixture. And we whisk away. Okay, we have incorporated our egg yolks fully. So as you can see, a nice shiny color texture. It's very smooth. So now we're gonna take our pie filling out of the refrigerator, pop it into the oven for about 10 minutes, and then fill it up. Okay, so <laughs> we've baked, half baked. Half baked the crust, so this is about 10 minutes in? About well, five minutes in. Five minutes yes. in. So what I like to do is another trick I do. Persons normally put it in before they put it in the oven. But what I do, I put it in first for about five minutes. As you can notice, the dough is a nice shiny color. So what I'm gonna do now is take parchment paper, press it down on the sides also. I'm putting my baking beans. This is to weigh the dough down. So now spread it out evenly. Okay, so we're learning a chef's trick right now. Yes. We're putting baking beans on parchment paper 
that's on the dough to keep it pressed down. So that's to keep right. the dough from rising. Rising too much. Okay. So I like it a little bit high so it be flaky and soft so you can taste the butter mm -hmm. when it's completed. So that's why I pop it in first, take it out, and put it in. And how long do we put it back put in? Put it now? back in for another five minutes. Okay, so we bake the crust for how long? Ten minutes. And we have the beans. Is the beans are part of the ingredients. It's looking delicious. Tell us about the beans so that persons don't go and pick up beans as part of the recipe. This is a baker's trick. To avoid your dough rising too much, place a weight. We normally use kidney beans, or you can use black beans, any beans that is not cooked. Place it, weigh down your dough, so it wouldn't rise too much. Okay, and can we put like a dish in there if we don't have beans? We can. If you have a slightly smaller Pyrex dish, lay your parchment paper, place the dish inside. Okay, so we're moving on to filling. So take it out, and as you can see, a nice buttery glistening under there. That's what we want. So now we're going to take our filling and just place it inside. And this is the sorrow part yes. of the sorrow meringue. So we're just going to take our spatula, smooth it down. You don't have to be super neat. I like to monitor when the peaks are forming. begin to appear, we're going to add half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Gradually, six tablespoons of white sugar. I'm going to turn the mixer back on, incorporate the vanilla, and then gradually add the sugar. Final ingredient is a quarter spoon, sorry, a quarter teaspoon of a cream of tartar that will help with the stiffness of the meringue.
and test to make sure it's ready. So when you remove it, nice soft peaks are formed. Good to go. Gently smooth it out. Make sure it's covered completely. Now we get to the fun part, disclaimer, kids, do not try this at home. No. So now we're going to use a kitchen toy of mine called Mrs. Torch to lightly brown the meringue. And it's also, because the eggs are raw, it's going to be cooking the eggs. Just like marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there you have it guys. Our sorrel meringue pie. Okay, so now that we have our sorrel meringue pie, I'm gonna bring in the tasters and we're gonna see just how delicious this pie is. Okay, so we are here with our first taster. Yes. This is the sorrel meringue pie. All right. So tidbit, okay. did you know that roselle is another word for sorrel? So we have an roselle meringue pie. There you go. Meringue so, pie. Um, it's, we're still in the festive season. Yes, All we right? are. But this is different though. I've never seen sorrel done like this. So I'm, I'm skeptical, but like I'm this. really intrigued. Gorgeous. Mm. Okay. The crust is really nice. It's soft. The rang is just brown nicely. But you feel it. You feel it. So you can taste the sorrel. It's not too tart or anything. It's just right. This is delicious. So hello everybody. My name is Kendra Homer. Um, most persons would know me from Miss SVG many moons ago. That's like in 2012. Yes. But currently, I am a lecturer at the SVGCC Division of Technical and Vocational Education, where I am delivering courses in hospitality and the culinary arts department. Okay, so we have a professional in our midst who is going to yeah. break it down bit by bit yeah. and tell us how this sorrel meringue pie is tasted. Okay. So go ahead, give us a taste and let us know. Okay, so before I taste, I, I, I would ask Zoe, is Zoe right? Yes? yes. Okay, so tell me what it is that she prepared. Mm -hmm. It's a twist on the classic mm -hmm. lemon meringue pie. Lemon meringue pie. I use sorrel for the filling instead of lemons okay so did you puree the sorrel yes no no i use the traditional method of boiling it mm -hmm. and reduce it to a okay. sauce okay and stir it in the refrigerator okay so let's dig in and see Let me try the pastry. So I think that there, there's a good balance between the meringue and the, the sorrel. What kind of pastry did you use? Regular. Um, Regular? Yes. Okay. Homemade. Pie crust. Okay, the, the pastry actually tastes nice, but I would have preferred to taste maybe flaky, okay. a little flaky, mm -hmm. right? But let's try again. It's very nice. The presentation, I think, is good. 
but for me, maybe you'll see my teaching ethics. I think I probably would have drizzled something red, maybe use something green for the presentation purpose or the aspect okay. of it. But fairly overall, um, fairly overall, good job. Thank you. All right. Okay, so mm. there you have it. There is balance between the sorrel yes. and the meringue. And you know it's not a taste test without Madza. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, dive in. This is a sorrel meringue pie. So, sorry, who? Sorrel meringue Spell pie. S O R sorry, Clara. Yes. Sorrel meringue. S O R double R E L. Mm -hmm. M E R I N G E E. That's not like it pronounced different how it's said, but they want a fancy yeah. thing like right. specs, like sorbet, a <laughs> puffy. Anyway, so we're gonna have sorrel moran. Yes. Pie. Pie. Mm -hmm. mm. You see, good, Andy. So is that dessert? Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, <laughs> the tasting thing, I, look, I, I was a little behind with getting to the tasting here today. And um, I didn't get to bring my special award. But if I had my special award. If he had the Frisco Bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I had my special award, I would have put in this in my. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mental. Mm. See that I don't have the frisco ball. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it guys. This is Frisco Bowl approved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there we have it guys. Our sorrel meringue pie. So just so we know how we're leaving, can you just give us your information again? Sure. You can find us at Facebook or Instagram is Canon Cake SVG or WhatsApp or call us at 455-1591. So take a look at her Instagram page and as she said before, just give her a call, let her know what it is that you're trying to achieve and she can see how best she can do, how best she can incorporate for you. So thank you for looking at another episode of Cooking with Vinci's. Brought to you, compliments, Asbert News Network, Careers Distribution Limited, ECGC, and Winfresh.